All right, I'm going to give you a quick tour of my DIY home uh, photovoltaic system. I'm just going to start over here with the electrical panel. Here's the main panel. Show some of the requirements of Southern California Edison and probably similar with most other electric companies. Uh, you've got to have a placard here that shows where the solar panels are on the house for firefighters. You've also got to have the uh, dual power sources warning here and actually show the output current and voltage. Um, I was able to get these from pvlabels.com. They did an awesome job. Uh, really cool. And then other stickers just came in like a generic PV system sticker pack. Um, and I'll show you the inside. As a part of this, you need, you obviously have a two pole breaker where the solar comes in to the panel. Uh, and that's got to be furthest away from the actual uh, main service. So in my panel, it's in the center. So as far as away as I can get is where the solar comes into it. And then you can see the other required stickers on here. Um, you can see you need to label the conduit that's got the PV power source coming in. Um, this is the combiner box from Enphase. Kind of this is how, um, I mean, this thing's cool because I can actually add more string. So right now I really just have one string, but you can see there's room for three additional strings. So I've just got the one string of 12 panels going in here. This is breakers for the Envoy, which is kind of the brains to, to be able to monitor uh, solar production. This is the schematic that was part of my uh, permit package. Basically, you have to show exactly where the wires are going through the layout here, what size wires they are. Uh, this is what, when I was getting my permit, I changed this a couple times and it cost me like $160 each time I changed it to, to redo the permit, so that was not cool. Um, you can see, so I have the, the wire from the panels coming through this conduit here, comes down. Um, and I, I, I use the conduit for multiple pathways, so actually the wire comes down into the combiner uh, and then through, just passes through the combiner to the disconnect and then back through the conduit and then back through into the into this, this breaker up here. So it's kind of weird the way I did it, but as long as you can make sense of it here in the schematic, everything everything works out. Um, that's that's how that works and then here's the disconnect obviously also needed a, a special placard for this showing the the exact current and voltage but pretty basic just have uh, you know a couple wires coming in a couple coming out and also the that main number six ground wire passes through here too um, and the reason I have this conduit going underneath the eaves for a little while and that's just because I was too lazy. It, it's very tight in my attic right inside there. So I was just like, well, if I just run along the outside a little ways. And then you can see I go in over here where there's a lot more room in the attic. And then it doesn't have to go far before I get to the, the panels where the panels drop down. So let me climb up there and I'll show you where the conduit comes in and how the panels are mounted. So underneath here, you can see that's where the power comes in from the panel. And I just have this flashing that was made for a one inch conduit. So that com conduit comes up and attaches to this box. And I'll show you a picture of what it looks like in that box, really just to to connect the, I, I use the Enphase uh, micro inverters, and so they come with the Enphase has their own specific wire to tie all the uh, micro inverters together. And then the, ju the junction box is just where I have to connect from that Enphase wire to the wires that run down to the uh, disconnect. So you can kind of see under there, this is where underneath each panel there's a uh, Micro inverter. 
Let's see them. There's one macro inverter right here. Uh, but I can talk about the conduit or the uh, the mount right here. It was actually very easy to install these. Really, all I had to do was figure out where the uh, truss is underneath here. And the way I did that is when you look under, at least on, on, at my house, you can see the truss is under there. So I had my brother down here standing there showing me where it was. And I just came up here and I had measured from the edge of the roof where I wanted it to go. Made a mark, did the same thing at the other end, made another mark, popped a string line. And then basically just took a drill with my brother kind of showing me where that, that uh, two by four was on the truss. Just drilled a hole. If I hit it, good to go. If I missed it, move over a half an inch, try it again. Because the thing is, you know, everybody's a little nervous to drill holes in their roof. But when you're going to have this massive piece of flashing over it, if you have a hole here, another hole here, it's not a big deal. It's not going to leak. And I felt it was sealant anyway before I put the flashing on. But all you have to do to put this on, once you have the, the pilot hole drilled, for the main, the main lag bolt that goes down into the 2x4 is just pop a couple there might be some staples in some of these in some of these shingles up here so then just you know pop those get those staples out so that you can slide this up under there and then reattach some staples put some of that Henry's sealant in there and then bolt this sucker on I mean it was it was quite easy on these asphalt shingles um, what else? You can see I get pretty poor performance in the a in the late afternoon in the winter because uh, all my neighbor's trees cause some shade when the in the winter time the sun is pretty low throughout the day. At least the first good part of the day I have sun, so I still do do okay. Um, what else? Other than that, I mean the way. These are iron ridge mounts that, you know, very easy. Um, the hardware is super easy to use. It just kind of slides in the channel and then it has kind of the self bonding where these have little teeth that just bite into the metal to connect. So I only had to attach that number six copper wire to, uh, to the rail and then the rest of it, you know, these, the panels, are connected to the rail with these bonding hardware and they're bonded together with the same hardware so it's super easy to ground just just that one connection everything else is automatically you know bonded together um, and it's super easy it's just you know four four little mounts per panel um, that's about it I mean I actually added two additional panels at a after the fact, I just got them real cheap and decided to just add them on. So I expanded the, the one string to 14. So I just bought a, a little bit more of that end face cable, put another junction box down there, and attached those two panels in. So I, I definitely have maxed out the, the current you can have on, on one string of end phase. So if I want to do any more, I got to add a, a second string. Uh, and then those down there are. Those are off-grid panels that I have charging my uh, Delta Pro batteries. You know, those those are enough to charge up my Delta Pros. You know, from when the sun comes up at 8 a.m. until by the time they're all shaded at about 2 2 2 30 in the afternoon in the winter. Um, well, yeah, it looks like I have. I should move some panels over here. I think where I'm getting sun. This is a. Uh, rough winter day in southern california i hope this was helpful uh, if you're considering uh, doing a, a do-it-yourself solar photovoltaic system it's uh, it's not too bad once you get past the permitting process thanks for watching if you uh, value this content i appreciate uh, a like and subscribe and have a wonderful day